Imagine a population of rabbits in some nice plain field. The sun is shining, there is plenty of food, and they can reproduce as much as they want. But now a small population of foxes appears, and because they find all of those rabbits, they too have plenty of food to reproduce. Now as more and more foxes appear, the rabbit population diminishes, right until the foxes don't find enough food anymore and stop reproducing. This leads to their population getting smaller, and so the rabbits can flourish again. And the cycle repeats. Hi and welcome to Premature Abstraction. Today we dive into the Lotka Volterra predator-prey model. Let's try to model the situation mathematically. We have the rabbit or prey population, let's call them X. Now the more rabbits there are, the faster they reproduce. Therefore we can say that the rate of change of this population is proportional to the number of rabbits. We don't know with which proportionality constant, so we just choose a constant parameter alpha here. On the other hand, we have the number of foxes or predators y, and of course the more foxes there are, the less food each one finds and more starve. So we can also express the rate of change of this population, again with a proportionality constant, but this time with a minus sign in front to show that the population shrinks when left on its own. If we leaved it at that, the two populations would not interact, the foxes would just die out naturally, and the rabbits would exponentially reproduce. But a fox will hunt the rabbit when it sees one, and the more foxes or rabbits there are, the more likely it is that two meet. So we can just multiply the two populations to model this. An interaction between rabbits and foxes reduces the growth of the rabbit population and increases the growth of the fox population again with some proportionality constants. What we have here are the so-called Lotka-Volterra equations. Let's see how they behave when tweaking the parameters. When we integrate the system of differential equations with given parameters and initial populations, we can see that it strictly has oscillatory behavior. It will always be periodic, no matter what parameters we choose. But let's see what happens when we, for example, change the initial amount of predators. Not much, it seems like it's pretty predetermined. However, tuning the number of prey almost linearly affects the amplitude of the oscillation. Increasing the reproduction rate of prey has a huge effect on the maximum prey population, which of course makes sense given that the predators need to catch up with that growth first, and when we instead decrease it, it drags out the whole process, because the rabbits will take so much time to reproduce but notice how the width of the peaks stayed about the same. This is not the case when we change the death rate gamma of the foxes. Last, the parameters beta and delta drastically affect which population has the upper hand, which makes sense since they amplify the effect of the interaction of the two on the respective rates. Now one last interesting property of the system is when the populations are in equilibrium. This means that neither population changes, so the rate of change is zero for both. We can then solve for x and y to see which conditions must be met for an equilibrium. The first case is not very interesting. That is when both are zero. This means that both populations are extinct, which of course leads to an equilibrium where nothing happens ever. Instead, the second case is more interesting with this solution. We see that x is only dependent on parameters from the predator equation and y only on parameters from the prey equation. When we again look at the graph, we can see how this equilibrium behaves. We tune alpha over beta to become 10 and gamma over delta to become 20, which results in the whole system stabilizing at those constant values. Of course, we can also move them when keeping the ratios intact. Now of course we need to be honest about our assumptions. We assume that the environment is homogeneous, which means that prey and predators are evenly distributed over the shared space. Also, the parameters are constant so they don't change over time. There is also no adaption of the species to the environment. Next, in our model, are no time delays for example during reproduction. We did not consider external factors as migration, environmental changes or other species. There are unlimited resources for the prey and no other resources for the predators, which in turn have limitless appetite. No species ages or dies because of old age. And the list goes on. Basically all of them 
are not entirely true in the correct world, but the model still has some predictive power and can even be applied to completely different domains, such as economics by modelling market competition, chemistry by modelling oscillatory reactions, or feedback systems in engineering. This has been Premature Abstraction. Thank you very much for watching.